In this instructional video, we focus on the indication, necessary equipment, and the proper technique of placing, inflating, and maintaining a Sangstake and Blakemore tube. Indications include hemostasis in emergency situations where there is uncontrolled bleeding from esophageal or gastric varices for temporary stabilization of patients until more definitive treatment can be instituted. The following items will be needed for this procedure, which is discussed in detail in the next segment. Blakemore tube, which consists of three lumens, one for gastric balloon, second for esophageal balloon, and the last lumen for gastric content aspiration. Two 50cc syringes, one to inflate the gastric balloon, and the second to suction out the gastric and esophageal contents. An adapter or the wide tube connector is needed for the esophageal balloon. This three-way adapter connects the esophageal port to the blood pressure gauge and the blood pressure inflation bulb. Three clamps or hemostats are needed to use for each of the ports, as well as water-soluble lubrication jelly. You can have either a sealing IV hook with 500cc bag of saline to provide counter-traction, or alternatively, you can use a helmet with face guard to tie the end of the Blakemore tube too. Now let's proceed to the actual placement technique of the Blakemore tube. Since this is a temporizing measure in most cases, arrangements for definitive treatments such as endoscopic therapy, transjugular intrahepatic portocystamic shunt, or TIPS, or surgery should be made. Patients should be intubated to prevent aspiration. Acquire the proper equipment as shown in the prior video clip and make sure everything is ready to go. The balloon should be inflated with air and held underwater to assess for leakage and then deflated. The tube should be marked at the 45 to 50 centimeter mark to gauge adequate depth of placement of the tube. Suction all the air to adequately deflate the gastric and esophageal balloons and then clamp their respective lumens. Then thoroughly lubricate the Blackmore tube. Next, pass the Blakemore tube through the mouth, which is preferred, or the nostril. Once at around the 45-50 cm mark, the tip of the tube should be in the stomach. To verify proper placement, air can be injected through the gastric aspiration port, not the balloon port, while auscultation is performed over the stomach and gastric contents can be suctioned to verify proper placement. Proper placement may also be verified by an x-ray. The gastric balloon should be inflated to about 450 to 500 milliliters of air. Pull back gently on the three lumen end of the Blakemore tube until resistance is met against the diaphragm. The proximal end of the Blakemore tube now can be secured to a face mask of a helmet or to a bag of saline and hung across an IV pole in a pulley-like fashion. If bleeding persists, inflate the esophageal balloon to the pressure necessary to stop the bleeding, usually 30 to 45 millimeters mercury. While the esophageal balloon is inflated, the pressure should be checked periodically, at least once per hour. It is important not to overinflate the esophageal balloon as it puts the patient at risk for esophageal necrosis or rupture. If the bleeding is controlled, deflate the esophageal balloon by 5 millimeters mercury every 3 hours until it is at 25. If bleeding resumes, the pressure is increased by 5 millimeters mercury. The Blakemore tube can generally be left in place for 24 to 48 hours, giving time for further definitive intervention. Thank you for watching this presentation of how to properly place a Sangstake and Blakemore tube in a patient with acute variceal bleed.